Well, praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord again. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we are again rejoicing, and will continue to rejoice in Christ. We want to say amen this morning, amen. We thank God for Jesus, amen. I believe in, I believe in Jesus Christ, amen. If someone want to know what I believe in, I believe 100% in Jesus Christ. I believe in the word of God. Where the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. I believe in keeping the commandments of Christ. I believe in the doctrine of Christ. I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. And that as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Also, I believe as Apostle Paul, he said in the book of, I believe that's, what is that, uh, maybe 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. He said, to the weak, I, I'm as weak. To those that are under the law, I'm as under the law. To those that are without law, I'm as without law. I made all things to all men that by all means I might save some. I believe in Jesus Christ. All right, let's go into uh, the 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. The 15th chapter of the book of Matthew. Let's read, amen, from the word of God. Then came to Jesus the scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also, talking about Christ, transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, verse 5, But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor it not, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw it nigh unto me, talking about to God, with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips talking good, but the heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let me read that again. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Now let me stop right there. We have to understand something that as we just said earlier, salvation is through faith in Christ. God gave the law to who? God didn't give the law to everybody. He gave the law to Israel. Moses gave the law to Israel. It was not given to the Edomites. It was not given to the Philistines. It was not given to the Moabites. It was not given to the Jebusites, the Canaanites, and you just want to keep on going. The law was never given to anyone but to Israel. God used the law to guide and govern Israel. When Christ came, though, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's all nations. And through Christ and through the gospel of Christ, Paul said, I'm not ashamed, Romans 1 and 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew and to the Greek, or to the Jew, the Hebrew, and the Gentiles. Now salvation is offered to all men. He gave his son for all men, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I think that, and I know that this is one of the problems and one of the confusions of the day, uh, is that the church is still trying to preach the law. Everything that was in the law that was instituted 
for the church, Christ gave it again. In the book of Matthew, you remember Jesus many times said, you heard it's been said this, but I say unto you. And then Paul in Romans, the four, uh, Romans, he talks about the law. So everything that was given to, to the church, not just Israel, but to the church from the law was instituted and given and reiterated by Christ and by those he used through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to give us in full now the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. When Christ built the church and when he got through with the institution of his laws through the apostles and through those that he used to finish out and give the church its doctrine, his doctrine, nothing else is needed. This is why the Bible says that we are ministers of the New Testament, not of the old, not of the letter. That's confusion. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. But if you're going to preach both the law of Moses and the gospel and doctrine of Christ, the yoke is not easier. The burden is not, not lighter. It's heavier. And this is what Jesus spoke about the Pharisees, lading men with heavy burdens. Now, here we have in our lesson today uh, a, a, great, uh, a great lesson. The Pharisees and the scribes were those Jesus said in, in Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Jesus said that, that, that they were those that sat in Moses' seat. They were in Moses' office to give Israel the law. But their hearts were turned from God, and they used their position for power and for personal gain. And they came to Jesus about an issue that his disciples didn't keep the tradition of the elders. Now, there are good traditions. I want you to understand this. I'm not against traditions at all. There are many good traditions. I was brought up in the church with many traditions that, are, that were wholesome, good. To this day, I see them as good. But we have to understand, and I want to say this right here, we have to teach tradition as tradition. We have to teach the commandments of God as the commandments of God. Everything, as I just got through saying, that was brought over from the law into the church, into the grace age, was instituted and re-given by Christ. If Christ did not bring it over, in under the church and under the, the auspices of the church, then it is now considered tradition. Even though it was for Israel, it is now tradition. There is salvation only through Christ. The early church had this problem that they had to deal with. And you can go read this in the 15th chapter of Acts and then in Galatians. They, there were those that tried to bring in the law and tried to bring in the customs and things under, under the law, under grace. That's confusion, and the Bible said God is not the author of confusion. This is why the Bible says again that we are ministers of the New Testament. Jesus said, go preach and teach my commandments. He didn't say nothing about Moses' commandments. He said, teach what I've told you. Preach my gospel. Teach my commandments. And so the Pharisees here and the scribes were, 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 were coming to Christ about an issue about his disciples not keeping the tradition of the elders. They wasn't, they, were, they wasn't keeping the law of Moses. They wasn't keeping the tradition of the elders. And Jesus avoided the question and sidestepped it and began to ask them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, you want to talk to me about the tradition of the elders. Why do you transgress the commandments of God, not the elders, the commandments of God by your tradition? For Moses commanded, God commanded through Moses, that you should honor your father and your mother. And him that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. But you say that it's all right for a man to speak dishonorably to his father or mother and tell them it's a gift by whatever you can be profited by me and, I'm, I'm gonna, and be free from judgment and be free from penalty and guilt. Jesus said, thus you have made the commandment of God, not Moses, the commandment of God, 
not the elders. You have made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. You have replaced what God has said by your tradition. Then he began to break it down a little bit further. He said, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They talk good about God. And honor it to me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. The scribes and the Pharisees accepted God. But they didn't accept Christ. Do you hear me? Let me say that again. The scribes and the Pharisees, both then and now, because there are still scribes today, there are still Pharisees today, there are still Sadducees today. That spirit is still in the land today, just, like, just as there are disciples of Christ in the earth today. They rejected Christ, but they embraced God. But you can't do both. You can't deny Christ and accept God. Let's get the word of God. I'm going a little bit different than what I had wrote down, but that's all right. Uh, 1 John 2 and verse 23. It says, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Now that's the word. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son, the same hath the Father also. So just like the Pharisees and the scribes replace the commandment of God by their tradition, we have the same thing taking place today. There are many in the church, in the church area, in the church arena, that are seeking to replace the commandments of Christ by their tradition. Jesus said, love your brother. Whosoever is angry at your brother without a cause shall be a danger of the council. Uh, he that hated his brother is a murderer. But we see many in the church today have taken on the, the mentality and the rudiments of the world. Just like the world, the principles of the world, just like the, the, the bloods and the crypts. If you're not a part of us, we don't have nothing to do with you. Even though Jesus said in Matthew, the fifth chapter, if you love them that love you, what reward have you? If you salute your brother and only, what do ye more than others? But we see today that many in the church, church world, have taken on and made their own traditions their own commandments. They have replaced the commandments of God. They have replaced the commandments of Christ by their own tradition. This is what we do. This is what we believe. And Jesus called these people, as well as he called people today, hypocrites. You want to say you honor in God, but you deny his son. You want to say that you're worshiping God, but you deny Christ. You're a hypocrite. That's what Jesus called. I told you many times, when, it, when we look at the word of God and read the scriptures, not just let people tell us, read the scriptures, we see a different Christ than what is preached today. Yes, he's a Christ of love. Yes, he's a Christ of compassion. Yes, he's a Christ of of, of mercy and, and all those other good attributes that we love. But he also rebuked. I got, a, I got a video out, the controversial Christ. Christ caused much controversy in his day. He even said, I come not to bring peace. Read the word. Jesus said, I come not to bring, bring peace. He said, I come to bring a sword. I come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother. And a man's foe shall be those of his own household. I come to shake things up. And when we see Christ, 
we understand that the scribes and the Pharisees of his day and time are still at work today. Let me show you. Let me show you. Jesus said, they have made the word of God of none effect by their tradition. Let's go to the word of God. Colossians. Colossians 2. Let's start, let's start reading at verse 1. We'll read, we don't read, read it all. I'm not going to be here too long, the Lord willing. Colossians 2 and verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict, Paul said, I have for you and for them of Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. This is Apostle Paul writing to the church in Colossae. That their hearts might be comforted, knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, listen to what he says, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Where is the scribes? Where is the Pharisee? Where is the Sadducees? Where are the Herodians of today? They're not in the world. They're in the church. And this I say, verse 4, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, I did a video, preach Christ. This is what we're preaching today. This is what we're talking about today. I'm talking about what Jesus said. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Verse 8. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy. We have replaced the commandments of Christ with our philosophy. Now philosophy means conviction, a person's own personal beliefs. Nothing wrong with it. As long as they don't conflict or contradict or transgress the commandments of Christ. Let me say that again. Philosophy is not bad as long as they don't conflict, contradict, and transgress or violate the commandments of Christ. But when you have a, 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 a philosophy, a conviction that goes against anything Jesus has said and commanded and taught, be it omission or commission, then it is a damnable philosophy. It is a damnable conviction. Beware lest any man spoil you through, verse 8, philosophy and vain deceit. There are many things that people teach and preach today have no biblical foundation. And I want to say this. Be careful whenever anybody start using terminology not found in Scripture. Let me say that again. Be very careful when people start using terminology that you can't find in the Word then it becomes the ideology of man. Be worthless any man spoil you through philosophy. Vain deceit, that's just a right out lies, after the tradition of men. Nothing wrong with good, good tradition, but when it goes contrary to the word of God, you can't follow. When it goes contrary to what Christ has said, you can't follow it and be of Christ. I have a personal testimony of something along that line years ago. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, after the tradition of men, it goes against what Christ said, but it fits in with what your church believes or what your, your, your uh, 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 statement of faith believes. What we believe. Well, I believe the word of God. I don't need to section off anything. I believe the word of all of it. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. I don't have a 10 list or 11 list or 13 or 15 list thing of what I believe. I believe what it says. All of it. The problem with many times ministers and I myself fell in this category for years is that we haven't went through and read everything. We haven't studied the scriptures as Jesus said. All of it. What was said in Genesis may be clarified in Exodus. What was said in Matthew may be clarified in Galatians. You got to read the whole thing as God told Ezekiel, eat the whole roll, not half. Don't have a sandwich. Eat the whole roll. And then John in the book of Revelation was commanded to eat the whole book. The little book. Read the book of Revelation. John had a little book. And the angel told him to eat all of it. It was going to be bitter. It was going to be sweet in his mouth, but bitter in his belly. But you got to eat it all. And what the problem is today is that many ministers, apostles, bishops, pastors, and I love all of you, but the problem is that you've only read part of the word of God. You've got sections that you've, you, you've got. And I'm not going to fight that, but I'm, I'm going to encourage you. Go back and read the whole thing. Eat the whole roll. If you eat the whole roll, you will come out understanding some of what you was told is not truth. I'm not saying that it was told with the intent to deceive, but when you take the word of God out of its context, now you have the ideology of man, not the commandments of God. You have the ideology, this is what I believe in me. Now that may be what it looked like in me, but you gotta eat the whole roll to get all of it. Are you listening to me? So we have to follow all of the word of God. I believe in Jesus, everything he said. That's what I believe. Philosophy, vain deceit. What did he, let, me, let me finish this in, in Colossians. Verse 8, beware, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna, I guess we may close it out here too. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Vain, if somebody give you something to do and you can't read it in the word of God, go back and see if the scripture verified, if the scriptures validated, if the scriptures permitted. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That's what the word of God said. Read it. Verse 8. And not after Christ. Don't ever let anyone take you from Christ. Because when you leave Christ, when you transgress the commandments of Christ, now you are in error. Now you are biblically spoiled. And not after Christ. Verse 9. For in him, who Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily in the flesh. There's no other man that ever lived. There's no man that's living now, myself included, that you need to hear more than Christ or above Christ. We are ministers of Christ to call and to speak the words of Christ. When I say have power, not because I say it, but because I'm repeating what the Lord Jesus Christ has said. By myself, it don't mean nothing. Our authority, our strength, our sufficiency, as the scripture says, is of Christ. Verse 10, and ye are complete in him, who? Christ, which is the head of all principality, and power. So yeah, let's keep our traditions. Let's keep our, our uh, philosophies. Let's keep our traditions, our philosophies, but we cannot follow the rudiments of the world. See, this is another area. Let me just deal with this right here. Many things that fit in the world don't fit in Christ. Many of our churches have been reduced down to the rudiments of the world. Let me show you an example. 
you have the Crips and you have the Bloods. One were blue, one were red. When they meet each other, they are automatically enemies. Not because of anything rational, not because of any reasoning, not because of anything that has been said or done. You on the other side. You got on the wrong color. And how many of our young men have been killed? Not because of anything they've, been, they've done that was wrong. They had on the wrong color in the wrong place. And we have the same thing taking place in our churches. You Baptists, you Holiness, you Kojic, you... You've been spoiled. Jesus said, sheep I have of other folk. Them also I must bring, and there shall be one foe. The disciples came to Christ one day and said, Master, we saw a man casting out devils in your name, and we forbid him because he followeth not us. He's not with us. He's not one of the twelve. Jesus said, Don't forbid him, for there's no man that can lightly work a miracle in my name and speak evil of me. He that is not against us is for us. He that scattereth not, gathereth. He that gathereth with us, scattereth not abroad. We're one in Christ. Our faiths may be different. We, the, only, the only requirement is that we believe the same in Christ. And you go read in the 14 and 15th chapter of Romans, Paul deals with those that believe that were of the Hebrews and those that believe of the Greek. And then he said in verse, I believe around verse 14 and 3 or 4, who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth the fallen. We got to stand before Christ. As long as we agree in Christ, we can earn out some of these other things. If you believe, have a tradition that's different from what I believe, I'm going to walk in love. If me offend my brother, I won't, I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to come into your church and teach something that's a contrary to what you teach it. But if you if you teach in Christ, but if you're not teaching Christ, I'm not gonna even come. Don't invite me. I don't want to come. But if you teach in Christ and believe in Christ, we're brothers. Anything that's above and beyond the perimeters of Christ, that's your personal belief. You have that right. The Bible said that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. But let's follow Jesus. Let's follow Christ, who said, "I am the way, the truth." and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want, to speak, I want to quote that one more time. John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father, he said, but by me. God bless you. Till our next video.